you know, as pastors and pastors, and there in many of our churches. Uh, but of course, we also have accredited ministers. Accredited ministers are those who, uh, in the association, are on our list of ordained ministers, and it is a fairly rigorous uh, affirmation of call that is to do with training, it's to do with uh, people affirming a gift of leadership, and it's to do with a, a group amongst our association who does put our accreditants through the ringer sort of thing, uh, because we want to be able to say, as we can with Ross today, that his call has been affirmed by the broad association of churches. It's been affirmed by those who have met with him and with Jenny and have interviewed them, and uh, it's been affirmed through the extra study that he has done in the Word, and it's been affirmed through you supporting Ross through that journey, so thank you. Um, I, I believe there are going to be some words on the screen, are there, for people to be able to, to say? So this is a, a participation that uh, we would like you on behalf of your church, but also representing those in our movement uh, who are together affirming the call through this ceremony today. So I've got some words that I'm going to say on behalf of our movement, and there's some responses in there for you to participate in on the screen as well, and we'd really appreciate it if you would do that. In the name of Jesus Christ, the head of the church, we're here to ordain Pastor Ross Callahan to the Ministry of the Word within the Baptist Association of New South Wales and ACT, and in the context of his pastoral charge of Granville Community Baptist Church. As we do, we remind ourselves that there are different gifts, but in the same spirit who gives them. There are different ways of serving God, but it is the same Lord who is served. God works through different people in different ways, but it is the same God who achieves his purpose through them all. Each one is given gifts by the Spirit to use for the common good. Together, we are the body of Christ, and individually members of him. Though we have different gifts, together we have been given the ministry of reconciliation, led by the spirit of the crucified and risen Christ. We work and pray to extend his kingdom throughout the world, and we call all people to faith, so that in the end, every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Ross, you stand before this congregation in the presence of Jesus Christ, the head of the church, so I ask you, do you affirm your faith in God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and in Jesus Christ as your Saviour and Lord? I do. And do you agree, do you engage in the strength of the Lord Jesus Christ to live a godly life, to discharge the duties of the ministry faithfully, diligently, and cheerfully? I do. And do you promise to preach and teach the word of God with faithfulness, leading those to whom you minister in worship and caring for God's people, equipping them for service? As an ordained minister of the gospel of Jesus, do you promise to represent your Lord, the church where you serve, and the Baptist Association with integrity, honour, and good character in the church, in the local community, and in society at large? I do. A minister of the gospel of Jesus does not serve alone. They journey with fellow disciples, serve alongside fellow workers, and are supported by fellow believers. As a symbol of your support for Ross in his continued journey of ministry for Jesus, would you please stand as we pray for him? I'd like to invite Jenny to join us up here as we pray uh, for Ross as well. And Jeff is going to come and lead us on behalf of the church, a prayer of commendation in ordination. Let's pray. Well, Heavenly Father, we acknowledge your call of the lives of Ross and Jeff. We acknowledge your preparation of them and their gifting, your gifting to them. Through your spirit's work in their life events and their participation in the life of Christ's body. Father, you have given to the Ross 
the Jimmy Fry and Hughes do that. Ross, as our pastor, for which we give thanks. Illnesses, COVID pandemic, and other negative forces have diminished congregational attendance. So we are in need of a hopeful vision for the future. And we pray for, for the future uh, that Ross and Jane will spend with us. Lord, uh, you are the Lord of the church. So give to Ross the spirit of love towards people, prayerfulness, willingness to build up the congregation by encouraging each to exercise service to others according to the vision. Thank you, Lord, for portions of the Word of God that has been open to us since Ross and Eddie came amongst us. Will you give to Ross then the continued diligence in the study of the Scriptures and rely on your beloved Holy Spirit to bring me the Word? Like that sermon we read about in Isaiah, the example of chapter 50. We know that God really crossed needs and destructive time. You give it to those who wait upon you. Grant this grace to you, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. As we remain standing, let me say, Ross, having been appropriately trained, having had your call affirmed by the people of God, Having fulfilled all the requirements and being approved by the leadership and the delegates of the Baptist Association of New South Wales and ACT, in the name of the Lord Jesus, I declare you to be an accredited and ordained minister of the gospel within the Baptist churches of New South Wales. Reverend Ross Callahan, may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. And we can all say, Amen. Amen. Let's go. I um, just want to say thanks very much, Jessica, you can sit, it's all right. Um, as you know, a uh, great privilege, um, great honour to be the pastor and to be amongst this congregation as a, as a brother and Jenny, of course, along my side. Um, but also a great responsibility felt today for the calling, for the... Um, shepherding, for the teaching, for the giving of uh, ourselves uh, to you as a congregation and of course as Jeff so wisely pointed out, the community that is surrounding us here at, at Granville. Um, so yeah, I really appreciate your prayers. Prayer is most important uh, as the longer I go in ministry, I understand the importance of prayer, not only personal prayer, but of course, others praying uh, for you. So thanks so much. And once again, uh, I'm really thrilled to, uh, to have Gray and Gemma here. Um, when I was at Campsie a few years ago, Gray was leading up the Southern sort of Baptist uh, movement, I forget what it was called, but a bunch of our churches from that south side of Sydney, southwest, got together on a monthly basis and it was such an encouragement and really such a, I guess, a friendship and support that um, I've felt over the years uh, from Gray and, of course, Gemma alongside uh, Gray there in ministry, as we know, and, um, and just, uh, you know, even eventuating here in Granville uh, was some journey as well. Uh, and, you know, ministry, of course, has its ups and downs, it's uh, hard times, it's good times, it's high times, it's low times. But, um, you know, I just wanted to say thanks this morning and, um, and really uh, want to encourage you to continue to pray for us and pray for God's work here uh, in Greenville. Thanks very much. Great. Jase, hand it back to you, mate. Congratulations, Reverend Ross Gallagher. <laughs> Thank you, uh, Pastor Gray, for the addition of the coordination. 
And we thank God for uh, uh, Colleen, uh, as well as and Jenny uh, to give in their lives and spread their lives to the Lord. So it's time for the Jaycees to come out. Do oh, we have Jaycees? Oh, we have a lot there. So uh, let's uh, pray for them and the teachers of God before they meet. Father God, we thank you so much for this wonderful time that uh, Jaycees can uh, learn and uh, learn about your words. May the teachers uh, uh, guide them as well as you. Uh, teach the teach they teach the children to uh, learn your words and your wisdom. Guide them more and bless them today. It's the same prayer. Okay. So thank you, JC. Thank you, Hannah and Rachel. Uh, Rachel and Eunice for teaching the children. So we will go now to our church prayer. May I call? Brother David Hammond to be us in prayer. Uh, you may be aware that uh, it's been a little bit on the, on the news about 70 years of rain by our Queen. And you would have noticed the protocol. And you uh, don't approach her or any of the royal family and just ad hoc. But we have the privilege of coming into the presence of the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Boldly. Let's do that. Our gracious Father, we thank you that we can come before you and call you our Father because of the death and the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. And because we have accepted him as our Lord and our Saviour. We thank you that you are here with us through the presence of the Holy Spirit. We thank you that you have asked us to bring our prayers and petitions to you with, with thanksgiving. And you promise us your peace, which passes all understanding. We thank you that we can celebrate with Pastor Ross's ordination today. We thank you that you have chosen him to be your servant, to share your word. And we thank you that you have given him the privilege to further his accreditation. Father, we pray that you will continue to work in him and you will continue to work through him to bring glory to your name. We thank you that you have given to each of us the privilege of being a part of your plan to reach the world with the good news of Jesus Christ. We thank you for your word, the Bible. We thank you that you, we have the privilege of owning it and reading it and of hearing it explained. We do pray for the many throughout our world today who believe in you and yet do not have a copy of your word in their heart language. We pray for those who do have your word but who need to worship and read your word in secret. Father, do protect each one. And through your grace and mercy, speak to their hearts and their lives. Sustain them and encourage them, we pray. We thank you that, as, that we can read your word and hear your word today without fear of persecution. We pray for grace as he shares your word today, Father. Do speak through him and do give us hearts and minds open to your word and your, what you want us to do. Father, we pray for the persecuted church, through the words of the Barnabas Fund Prayer Diary. Lord God and Heavenly Father, we praise you for the gift of the Holy Spirit. We thank you for his work of bringing individuals to faith and of comforting, sustaining and teaching each one of your saints. We ask that suffering Christians around the world will be encouraged in the knowledge that they are God's temple and that your spirit lives within them. Whatever our circumstances, we pray that the Spirit would increase our joy in you, because we ask it in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Father, continue to pray for the conflict in Ukraine. We pray against the invasion from Russia and the atrocities that are taking place under the name of uniting people. We pray for those who honour you, 
that they will remain strong and be encouraged by your spirit. We pray that through their witness, many more would come to know the Lord Jesus Christ as their own personal Saviour and trust him in the midst of this turmoil. Father, we pray for the President of Ukraine that you would give him wisdom in the decisions that he needs to make. Father, we pray for our missionaries. We pray that each one of them would seek to bring glory to you. This would be their motivation in all that they do. We pray for Paul and Debbie, for them as they continue to encourage your church. We pray that you will continue to build your church in the Philippines as you promised. Give them wisdom as they seek to share your love in the new areas. We think of Paul and Nancy too, and we pray that you would protect them and, and then we continue to give healing to Nancy. Wisdom to Paul as he seeks your guidance and direction for their future. Father, they have so many plans to serve you in their limitation to the undue to Nancy's sickness. You encourage them to show your love and show your love to them. And may they know your presence and all its richness. You have a plan for their lives. May they know it and see it and grasp it with enthusiasm which only you can give. We think of burnout and grace, and if we ask that you would encourage them in the ministry in Sri Lanka. Do protect them, Father. Do open doors for them to share your love and your grace and your mercy. We pray for your provision for them and for the many others who know and love you in the midst of this crippling economic crisis. Do provide the necessities of life for them, Father, and for their ministry. Do have mercy on Sri Lanka, we pray. We pray for protection, for your protection for David and Carol and your provision for them in their ministry in Indonesia. Do open doors of contact for them, build your church through them. For Fred and Lydia serving in Alaska, do keep them safe. Do provide for them and their needs and work in them and through them. And Father, we do pray for the witness of the church here in Granville. Your promise is that through the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit, you will make us a witness to the ends of the earth. We thank you that you chose to, us to bear fruit and that that fruit would last. We pray that you would build your church here in Granville and throughout the world. We need your wisdom. We need your enabling to be a part of your plan for this church. We pray for the leadership of this church that they may be open to your leading and guiding for them, and for each one of us that we would understand your will for us as a fellowship. We pray for those in our fellowship who are mourning, those who are unwell, those who need your special attention. We lift them up into your gracious care. We do pray that you will meet their need and that they will recognise that you care for them and love them. We continue to pray for our government, which we as a people have elected and you have provided to run this country. We pray that they would govern with integrity, that we would continue to have freedom to worship you, and that many would come to know and to love you as you continue to build your church here in Australia. We do pray for our daily needs, for each of us individually, for our churches, for our fellowship, fellowship and for our nation in the midst of the rising costs. Father, thank you. Thank you that you promised that if we seek first your kingdom and your righteousness, all we need will be provided. And Father, we seek you in the name of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you, David. We shall sing another song. Can I call the singers? Yay. Let us all sing I Surrender. Let us turn up this together.
uh, for those in that country. And I guess by extension, those other countries like ourselves who, has, who have the Queen as our head of state. And of course, it, uh, it is a, a, an interesting thing to see when there is a celebration and the Queen is able to be present that everyone sings the national theme song, God Save the Queen, and she's right there. I would think that would be an awkward thing for her maybe. I guess she's used to it since she's been doing it for 70 years now. But, you know, everyone else stands. Of course, she doesn't. And she doesn't sing because I guess she'd be saying, God save me. Um, and of course, that song is not really particularly about her as a person. It's about that role, isn't it? And that often happens. There, there are songs that are particular for particular situations. We might call them a theme song or a national anthem. I know when the American president uh, walks into an event, they don't actually sing the American national anthem. They sing a song called Here Comes the Chief or something like that, and it's very distinctive. And everyone knows that that is what it's about. Uh, we have theme songs in different contexts, don't we, as well, in our world. If you watch TV, you would know that there is a theme song for every TV show or before that, the radio programs. And it, it is something that is consistent that reminds you what is about to come, a good TV um, theme song will do that. Uh, what has gone before, you're remembering the previous episodes and it gives you a context for what you're about to see. And I think through the scriptures, we find little snippets of something that's like a theme song, something that we can remember that helps us place ourselves in what has gone before, helps us to understand more of where we are now and helps us to look forward to what is to come. They're good to have these theme songs. For my own story, I've had a number of theme songs um, that I enjoy. Some of you may have worship songs that are theme songs for you. You may have other songs that have been important for you in different times of your own journey. Uh, for me, um, I confess to have been over my life a bit of a John Farnham fan. Anyone else know John Farnham? There's a couple of us going, yes, John Farnham, that's good. And uh, through my life, I have really enjoyed and resonated with his song, You're the Voice. Does anyone know? Anyone know that song? Not all of you will. Some of you will. Yes, I'm not in. You're the voice. Try and understand. I'm tempted now to break out in a song, but I won't. And I guess in a ministry of, of calling for me, it's actually resonated in a way that was never really meant to be when it was written, I believe. Um, you're the voice trying to understand and make a noise and make it clear. This idea of actually sharing who we are and what we believe God has called us to and, and to make that known to others around. So it's been an important song for me. It doesn't have to be for you. It was for me. When I left my previous pastoral role um, at Blakehurst Baptist Church uh, and started to work for the association in a ministry role there, uh, there was a farewell service and that went well and people were praying and we had a good time together. And at the very end of the service, uh, the church secretary had prayed for me and I went to sit down and said, now stay here for a moment. Everyone was standing. And then I could hear these bagpipes. And they got a bagpipe that had come. And if you know the song at all, it's got this very clear bagpipe theme. And they came down the aisle, sort of a bit like this, came down the aisle, uh, piping, you're the voice, try and understand it came up and I had to be piped out of the church to a John Farnham song on bagpipes. I don't know that anyone else can say that's happened to them in their farewell service from a church, but that's what happened to me because that was an important part of who I was and people knew it. And so that was uh, an honour for me to experience that. As is this verse, which is a theme, I think, which has just been read to us. It's a little bit of a theme song for those in ministry. Now, by what I mean by those in ministry, it's certainly important to be able to reflect on these verses in the context of a reaffirmation and next season for Ross in his ministry. But we as good Baptists know that the ministry doesn't belong to the pastor, right, or the reverend. We know that ministry belongs to all of us. As uh, Ross would have re-engaged um, with through his more recent studies, um, a Baptist distinctive is the priesthood of all believers. And so we don't need a minister, a recognised pastor, an accredited minister, an ordained minister to be uh, representing us between us and God. As we're reminded of when we pray, we are able to enter into his very presence. 
And so this verse that we're focusing on today, while very pertinent for Ross and for those of us in ministry, it is pertinent for all of us. So let's have a, a look at that verse again as we pop that up on the screen. For you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvellous light. If you're familiar with the verse, try to make your brain unfamiliar with it because it's full of richness that familiarity sometimes breeds contempt towards. These are words of life, words of light, words of power, words of purpose, words of comfort, words of strength, words that connect us, followers of Jesus, with God's grand story, words that can remind us what has gone before, give us a context for where we are now and give us direction for where we still need to go with some beautiful, unmistakable Old Testament imagery in it. So let's dig into it a little bit this morning. These uh, verses help me know what has gone before. We are a chosen people. Uh, one, of, one of my favourite series of movies is in the Indiana Jones series. Actually, I say the, it's a favourite series. Actually, two of the movies are rubbish. But this one is really good, actually. Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade uh, with Harrison Ford and Sean Connery playing his dad. And without, I mean, it's too late. If you haven't seen it, spoiler alert, I'm just going to tell you, but it's been out for so long, you probably should have seen it by now. But the, the premise of that is a fantasy action. The premise of it is that Indiana Jones and his dad are following the clues, as often happens in Indiana Jones movies, in to find the Holy Grail, which is meant to be the cup that Christ used at, his, uh, at the Passover, at, the, at what we, the equivalent of what we now celebrate as communion. And the legend was that those who drank from that cup would have eternal life. And so there are maps, there are clues, there are baddies trying to beat them there to use the power of the cup for their own nefarious ends. And they come to this final test through these caves and Indiana Jones with his father behind him having been shot and injured and dying unless they get this cup to save him, have these clues in the book. And he goes through this, this uh, cavern where clearly other people have lost their lives trying to get past, and the clue is the breath of God, only the penitent man shall pass. There are spider webs, there are skeletons. He's going through and he's repeating to him, the penitent man, the penitent man, only the penitent man shall pass. Just in time, he kneels down in a penitent position as you would when you're repenting in prayer, and a blade swings over his head and he manages to get through the first barrier. To the second one, the clue says, the word of God, only in the footsteps of God will he proceed and there in front of him. There are letters uh, in different order, in front of him in different tiles, and he's going... How do I get through here? Only in the, the name of God, the name of God, and he steps out the word, their letters to say uh, the, to spell out the word Jehovah, the name of God, and he gets past this uh, barrier because if he stepped in the wrong place, he would have plummeted to his death. The final one, the leap of faith from the lion's head, will he prove his worth? And he's there, there's a lion head carved into the way, and then right below him is this cavernous, a bottomless pit it looks like. And how can he leap and get the way across to the doorway into where he thinks that the final cup would actually rest? And he manages to uh, step out in faith, hand on heart, and steps forward into the cavern, and there camouflaged is a bridge. And he brings up some dirt and throws it across. He can see the bridge and gets across to fight the night to get the eternal life of the cup of Christ. I'm exhausted now having watched this. Isn't it good that the gift of eternal life is not at all even close to demanding from us that sort of trial, that sort of work, because it is a gift from God? And being chosen, as the people of Israel were, and that phrase being used in this passage, is about God doing all that was needed to be done 
so that we need to do no more to earn it. All we need to do is receive the gift that has already been paid for. The trial has been done by Jesus, not by us. And so to be chosen speaks of the wonderful grace and love that God has for us, that he would do all that was needed to bridge any gap that exists between us. Being chosen is something to remember, as it is being the royal priesthood. Royal priesthood, of course, is a role of Old Testament images. Of the, it was a privileged role of purpose. The priesthood, the royal priesthood, was that where the, the divine, the king of kings, would send us on as a people, or the people of Israel, and therefore us in this verse, to represent him, not in a way that I just mentioned we don't need anymore. People can come into the temple of Jesus and the presence of God in, uh, ourselves, but we are to be on the journey to point people towards that destination, to minister to people as priests, as a holy nation, uh, as a community set apart, God's special possession. Isn't that beautiful? I mean, we don't really use the word possession now as anything that is beautiful. In fact, it's got overtones of what may be quite negative in the sense of slavery. People don't own people. But here is a special possession, a treasured relationship is what this speaks of, where God loves us and cherishes us and owns us as a family owns um, the members of the family in an intimate way. We belong to one another, we will say. We belong to God, we will say. It just rests in those beautiful words that remind us of who we are. We are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, and I think most beautiful of all there, God's special possession. Reminds us of who we are. But this theme verse, which um, reminds us what has gone before, um, also reminds me what God has done for me. And if we skip past the middle verse and to the end, we see that he's called me and he calls you and he calls us from darkness into light. I don't know if you've ever been to any of the sites where you can go down into caves, you know, the natural caves that have been discovered and people will go down into them. And we've put lights in them so we can see. And there's some up at Janola and there's some that um, we as a family have been to down at Yurangabilly Hayes down the, in the mountains, uh, the snowy mountains down there. And they're beautiful. And we've gone down there a few times with family. And there's always a time in the tours where they say, okay, find your place and make sure you're not moving now because we're turning the lights off. Has anyone experienced that before? Turn the lights off. And then if you've never experienced darkness before, this will be the time when you cannot see Anything, And we don't often have that experience in everyday life. Even when it's dark, you know, you get up in the middle of the night and you, you, you need to leave your room and it's sort of, but you can see a little bit, right? There's little cracks of light coming in. There's stars, there's moon, there's in the city, there's other lights. Here there's pitch blackness. Just nothing, can't see the hand in front of your face, literally, as that phrase goes. It is really dark. Without God in our lives, there is great darkness, the scripture says. And you need light to be able to see where to go. You need light to be able to know your next step. You need light to be able to see where the pitfalls are or the dangers are. You need light on the path to know the way. And Jesus, this verse reminds us, has saved us from dark, called us from darkness into his wonderful light. And he did that through his death and his resurrection. As I inferred before and now say very clearly, Jesus' death and resurrection saves us and shows us the way, provides the light in the midst of the darkness so that we can see where we need to tread and the way he wants us to go. Now, we still live in the now and the not yet when there is plenty of darkness around. We prayed earlier about the war in Ukraine. We know in our world through pandemic and through people's actions and through the horrors of things on, on our TV, such as 
the horrible slaughter of 19 children. Isn't that just horrific that that uh, school shooting happened just the other week? Yet in the midst of darkness, Jesus gives us light and hope and a way forward. He's done that for us and he's done that for you. And it's worth pausing to remember that. The theme uh, verse here which focuses me on what has happened before and where I am now then says, therefore what? If I have been called from darkness into light, therefore what? If I am a part of the chosen people, royal priest of the holy nation, God's special possession, therefore what? Well, the middle of this verse actually highlights the therefore what. So that we can sponge it all up and feel good about ourselves, so that we can know about the truth and do nothing more about it, no, so that we can declare the praises of him who called us out of darkness and into light, declare the praises. Figuratively speaking, we sing like we might a theme song. This could be a theme song of Christians, I think. We sing praises. Now, some of us have worship songs, but I mentioned that. Um, we might consider a theme song of ours. You may have one yourself. In our praise, we reflect on what God has done, what we've become, and we de declare his praises to honour him, to show our gratitude, to magnify him, to adore him. How good is God? Again, familiarity breeds contempt, right? We get used to the story of the gospel, get used to our relationship with Jesus. But how good is God? that he has bridged a gap, he has come towards us, has given us a pathway forward, forgiveness, grace, love, transformational life that changes us and changes others. God, God is good for us and to us. But the words here, by the way, could just as rightly be translated, declare the mighty deeds or shout out his excellencies. In other words, I think it's quite okay in this verse to see that this command might have two different possible audiences and maybe both at the same time. We would declare our praises to God, that is true, but we declare his praises to others. Tell other people about his mighty deeds. Declare his goodness so that others can have a piece of what that means. Tell it. The first is about telling God how good he is. The second is telling others how good God is. Declaring and demonstrating the kingdom of God. But what God has done leads to the who I am now, which is inspiring, inspiring me to the how to live in this world. The what God has done in the past leads me to who I am now, the chosen people, the royal priesthood, the holy nation, people belonging to God, that inspires me to the how to live in this world, declare praises to God and declare his excellencies and what he's done for others. You can tell how I love the, this verse so much, can you? These are words of life and light and power and purpose and comfort and strength, and so I apply them to me. They could be applied to Ross, of course, but we um, admit that um, I've got to be careful because they are in the plural. Well, I can apply them to myself. They are actually plural you. You all, as the Americans would say. It would be nice if we had a better English word. So we knew when you, we knew when you meant you individually or when you meant all of you. So the Americans just decided to put an all on the end of it, which sort of helps, I think. You all are a chosen people. You all are a royal priesthood. We are a people belonging to God so that together we can declare his praises and his mighty deed to others. I say when I speak at inductions and at ordinations or at special events about pastors who I'm here to honour or to induct or to ordain, that the church doesn't work if the church believes that the pastor is the one who does all the work. The ministry of the church isn't the ministry of the pastor. The ministry of the church is the ministry of the body of believers. And a pastor can only 
experience fruitful ministry as much as there are a team of body of believers committed to a local church to do that together. A final story for you this morning. I like to say that sometimes. Some, some, some preachers say finally and they just keep on going. This is the final story for this morning. Um, a couple of years ago, it was at the very beginning of what we didn't know was going to be a years-long COVID experience. Uh, Gemma had bought some tickets for us in, uh, for a birthday of mine, and we went into a concert in Town Hall in Sydney. It was by it was a music, musician that's a favourite one of ours, Ben Folds. Now, ben Folds was there, but what we love to do when we have some of our favourite musicians, if ever they um, appear and sing or perform with an orchestra, wow, it just ups it greatly. And Ben Folds, an incredible pianist and a uh, great uh, lyricist, was performing in the Sydney uh, Town Hall with the Sydney Symphony Orchestra. Now, one of the things, we were in there and it was the beginning of the, the pandemic and it was going to be the last weekend that music and concerts were going to be held like this, so we were very fortunate and blessed to be there. In the middle of it, someone yells something out in, a con- in the concert, just out of just a person sitting there, just another person like we were. Well, I didn't realise at the time but have now learnt that all of Ben Fold's concerts, this is a bit of a thing, Someone yells out this phrase and Ben will say, okay, and explain that he will write a song on the spot. Now, I thought this is going to be a bit of a jam, right? This, this, is, this is staged. But um, our daughter and her boyfriend had been the night before and we compared notes afterwards. It was a different experience. And so what he did with the Sydney Symphony Orchestra there is he said, let me think of something, uh, a storyline. We were across the road from Woolworths in town and it was the time when, although we didn't have the restrictions, everyone was buying toilet paper. You remember that time? Remember that? And so he made up this story off the top of his head of um, a car, like in a 1970s TV show, so it was like a 1970s TV theme show, theme song, came roaring around the, the corner. Some people got out, they went in, they stole all this toilet paper, and they got back in the car and they rocketed it off. That was just the story. But then he created music and on the piano he said oh, I think we'll do this and he said trombones can you do this for me please dun, 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 dun. and the trombones did it and then he said okay violins could you do this for me and he played up something up the top and they played that only just a few phrases not very very much and he and then he went up to the uh, he talked to the percussion section and he said percussion section um you there could you get the triangle out and could you just do this all the time? Okay. And he did that a few times. And then he, he looked at the conductor and he just sat back and said, you take it. You think this is going to be a mess, right? Like they haven't rehearsed these things. And the conductor skillfully then played his part and brought in the trombones and brought in the violins and then pointed up to the triangle lady and she just kept playing and there was a different part for the oboes and a different part for the clarinets and the conductor masterfully brought them in at different times and it came together ingeniously and beautifully and then Ben Folds was suddenly playing along on the piano and singing a song about someone going and stealing toilet paper across the road. And then the conductor, after a nod from Ben, brought them out and then it just came to a conclusion. I was stunned. There was a standing ovation, the only song that night that got a standing ovation in Sydney Town Hall. And I thought, that's just like the church. The beautiful message of the gospel is the music and the conductor brings us in and out to form a symphony depending on our different gifts. The conductor by himself could not have done it. But when we come together, there is beautiful music. And it was great. And the conductor then pointed to every section of the, of the orchestra and they all got their own cheers. Do you know who got the biggest cheer that night? The person playing the triangle got the biggest cheers. It was the simplest thing, but it actually created the greatest impact. Friends, we are like that. We are together in this. We are a chosen people. We are a royal priesthood. We are a people belonging to God, his greatest possession. Why? So that we may declare his praises. 
so that we may tell others and show how good he is because he has called us, you individually, us together out of darkness into his wonderful light. Hang in there for Jesus. Continue to work together with love and grace. Be hopeful. Work with your pastor, the Reverend Ross. Rev Ross, if you want to call him that from now on. Work work together with one another. Know that it's still a hard slog. It's dark out there sometimes, but you carry the light of Christ. Love one another. Love those around you. Love the stranger. Love the enemy. Be who Jesus has called you to be and give him the honour and praise at all times. Let's pray together. Lord, we thank you for the goodness of your word and how wonderful it is to be reminded of who we are and all the richness of this imagery. Lord, we come to you as a chosen people, a royal priest with a holy nation, as God's special possession. We come to you as people grateful because you've called us from darkness into your wonderful light. And so, Lord, today we declare praises to you with gratitude in our heart. We thank you and we praise you for who you are and what you've done for us. And we commit ourselves again to declare your mighty deeds, to live out your gospel, to shout out your excellencies to those around about us, to those we love, to those in our families, to those we love and know. We commit also to love those we don't know. And, Lord, we pray that you would use us and help us to be resilient in the calling you've placed on our life. We pray again for Ross in this season of his ministry and leadership, that you would be with him but with others here who will work alongside one another for your kingdom purposes. Bless them, I pray, in the power of Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Reverend Barry. What a wonderful uh, verse that we hear today. It's been a blessing. So we continue our service. Uh, we should can.